is another example of very old lacquer that didn't have enough time to leach in the pot before being used for potting up. I am very fortunate and have been very diligent to make sure that the roots that eventually grew out of my Cattleya luminosa didn't burn. There was a lot of misting on the surface to make sure that that lacquer wasn't going to burn the roots. So we have some dried up root tips, but that is environmental. That is due to my conditions here. When it's windy, the humidity drops to practically nothing. Hi there. Next up on the list of things to do is my Cattleya luminosa. Thank you for joining me. I have today swirling wind conditions, so I'm going to hope that the mic is protected for the most part. I have not soaked this orchid because we have just had 24 hours of rain. She was out of her mask. She's had a lot of water, so I'm not thinking that I need to soak her any further than what she's already been dealing with. After a lot, a lot of rain, I didn't think it was necessary, but I may have misjudged. There is a root tip that I want to have when I finish this process. Just want to make sure that maybe I do need to at least come in with the sprayer. Yeah, let's give that a goo. Not like I'm trying to cut corners here, but I really didn't think that this orchid needed any soaking. Just goes to show how dry the ambient air already is, despite the rain. Now that the wind has come, everything's dried out. So let's see, am I going to stop the video and come back in an hour? Actually, I have another one that I want to repot in, in this video as well. Depending on how long this takes, I want to get at my Velotina. Let's see if the Velotina is a better option and will come out easily and I may need to soak her. Proof of how dry my air is already. Let's see what the Bellotina tells us. There she is. Let's switch off to Bellotina and see what goes on. See those new roots coming? Precious, precious. They're still small, but I want to get into this pot. She's been in here two years. I don't want to spend another year wondering if everything's okay. My backup, if something should go wrong, are the new roots. She's an extremely slow grower, and that is why I don't want to wait another year, despite the fact clearly she has plenty of room in the pot. Let's see if she responds better. Yeah, I think we'll work with Velotina before we go to Luminosa. I'm not anticipating any kind of weird repot on this one. Just want to make super sure to protect those roots that are coming now. There is one in there that I want to also keep. Very, very reluctant root grower, little seedling. Everything counts here, but they're long. <laughs> they're reaching all the way down into the bottom. So that is great. and they're attached to the microfiber. Okay, but we have some great roots. Let's get rid of this and let's get rid of the microfiber and see, oh, okay. <laughs> the root has grown through it, but it's a good one. So I am going to forfeit my microfiber for the sake of the root.
right. Let's get you cleaned up and resituated. We have one deteriorated root right here. I think it doesn't look good. It feels okay. I'll just take it back down to there. See one more bead off. No, it's gone. But it's gone only to a certain point. Because this is still hard. Okay, next one, next one. There is a next one. Or, yeah, up here. And this one. Well, that wasn't too difficult. I didn't expect it to be difficult with this one. But at the end of the day, you never know. I didn't expect it to be difficult with the Luminosa either. Okay, let's change the nozzle. Just be careful. I have done use, I've done damage on a root tip before with this nozzle. So I just want to be careful where I go in. But I'm very, very excited to see this little Luminosa with new roots coming. And did I just snap that root? I did, didn't I? We'll cut that off. Yep, the weight of the lecker. There we go. New roots. And it's going to have a new growth as well. See that? Little tiny, tiny new growth there. Very excited. Okay. Let's get you situated and pretend nothing ever happened. I'm going to clean the pot. I'll be right back. While cleaning up the pot, I had a thought with regards to should I put a support in or shouldn't I? And I'm like, nah, it's a little one. Don't put a support in. But again, I'm thinking two years. I don't know how big a growth is going to get. I don't know if it's going to respond to my light training and getting it into the position of the pot that I want at the angle that I want it to grow in. So with all these thoughts combined, it is getting a support and it no harm, no foul. The same support can go back in instead of guessing around. Doesn't hurt to do this and get it situated and then not think afterwards. Why did you cut that corner? And let's get you in properly. Right. Will you float? Woohoo. The next thing I'm going to do, float more, please. In contemplating the next step here, what I'm going to do is, because of the root structure, the root structure is quite large. I'm also thinking that it's not going to be a seedling much longer. It'll be probably a juvenile at the beginning of next year. So seedling treatment and conditions are gonna change. It's gonna get large lecker to accommodate the root ball that is in there right now. And then I'm topping off with small lecker to accommodate the new roots going in and that they don't dry out so quickly on me as they try to go in. And as I see the length of the root, there is no need for me to put Lekka in at the bottom. So let's get this out of the way and get the orchid in. These roots are used to very wet conditions as it is. I don't have to a barrier in seeing as they are already accustomed to all this the point of the exercise of this potting up not really it's a cleanup not a potting up and it is advisable to do this at least every two years and if time doesn't permit every three years in this method of growing so we'll leave her like that and get our large leka first. Very, very mindful of the root tips. Ideally, I already want her in the pot in her final position. So that's push down my loop thing. I'm not bothered. Not bothered anymore. This is gonna work okay. Make sure that I don't touch those roots and just let the leka beads fall into place. 
another little layer of just the big stuff. Super gentle. I have come to really like filling lecker in while there's water in the pot because the beads literally float into position as, as opposed to falling into position, which in my opinion is a much gentler repot on the roots that are already established and they don't get smushed by the weight of the media. I hope that makes sense, but I've become, this is, if I can't, if I forget in future, then you're welcome to always remind me, whoa, you forgot the floaty floaty thing. And I'll be like, yep, you're right. But this is how I am going to be repotting in future. Just to make sure that the repot is as gentle as possible on the existing roots. See how they float into position, it's cool. And here's my small lecker. I'm just gonna drain it now because I don't want the small lecker to be floating around. It needs to fall into position. What I'm going to do around this bit here is leave a hollow underneath the roots as they're going straight in. I'm not gonna fill that with lecker. That'll be a good place for me to keep misting so that the rhizome doesn't get affected, neither does the new growth. So I'm leaving that hollow there. I'm gonna maintain its humidity level so the roots go straight down. Once they are long enough, I will fill up around them with small lecker. And that's it. Fertilized water is enough in the reservoir. My bellotina is good to go for another two years. Very, very pleased. Plenty of water in the reservoir. She's good to go. Now let's check on what Luminosa is doing. Goodness me. These are tough roots. So you get my point. I'm trying to get my knife in and underneath as gently as possible to wedge the root off and away from the edge of the pot without cracking it. Very, very tough suckers as they suck themselves to the edge of the pot. This one is loose. But the question is, is it down here? It is now. Okay, let's have a look, see. And I have a root tip to be mindful of. We'll go in the opposite direction. This uh, Luminosa was languishing for a long time. It took forever to grow some roots. Back then I wasn't separating my leka out. I was working with misting only. So it was always touch and go how this orchid is performing in the pot. And these roots are all from last year, 2020. So they should be new, but you can see, oh, we get all the parsley out here. You can see why after a year I'm going in just to see how are they coping with the climate inside the pot. One thing is to, for me to assume it's been one year, no biggie, but because these roots are new, I don't know, are they happy? Are they not happy? Is there something I need to do? This little guy can come off. And you can see that Luminosa is also a climber, which is not a problem when you have bark or dry organic media. When it comes to wet, like the setup of Lekka and self-watering is, this is an issue which can also encourage a lot of rot very quickly. So I'm potting her up again the way I had before and you can see that some of the roots were happy and then stopped. Some just stopped completely. This was probably, yeah, no, this was an old root, so that's a good sign. This old root is not dead, but it's going to be, probably after this repot and after being disturbed. But yeah, it's a good idea, in my opinion, if you're growing in a wet environment and you're not familiar with the root system of an orchid and you know that it's just grown a new root system and you, while you've had it, to go in and check it out. How is it coping? 
are there any adjustments that need to be made? And here I'm seeing, I'm going to make an adjustment and I'm not using any mixed small lecker like this. It's all going to large lecker. So we'll clean her up. And I can't see my screen. I'm hoping that what I was trying to show just now was on camera. So what I'm doing is just actually conservatively taking off, of course, the dead, obvious dead ones. But I'm not going to be taking off the one that looks to be somewhat dead. It's still functioning. I'll cut back to the live part of the root, which is probably going to fail eventually. But for now, it's going to stay in the pot and help out. At least I have new roots growing, which is great. I'm very pleased now to know that this orchid is producing roots on the regular. Sorry for that jiggle. And we are okay with this one and it's going back in the same size pot, but with large lecker only. Look at what's going on back here. I'm very wary of how the wind is blustering, so forgive me if I'm trying to focus on the orchid and then the mic is not clear. I do apologize for that. Fern roots and you name it. Goodness me, this orchid's got everything. Oh, look at that. Nice. Another eye. I like that. It might not manifest into anything of importance at this point in time, but maybe one day. I don't want to cut the rhizome because I want her back in the pot. I don't want to have to wait. This has to happen a little bit more quickly because she has had a lot of rain. She has been soaking again. So there's plenty of water and I want the breeze to help me out to dry the circumstances around the base out after this very wet repot so that I don't get rotten here. And that's why I'm not cutting the stem off so that I don't get anything into the rhizome at this point in time. See if we can remove some of that moss or how tight is it packed in there? Get that parsley out. <laughs> so I don't see a big problem here. The roots do look a little bit bashed and bruised as if they haven't been here for a year. But that's okay. I'm glad that they are alive. I'm glad I've gone in. I'm glad I can see how they are behaving and I'm glad I can make the necessary adjustments right now. Off camera, I have sterilized my tools. As it is breezy, I do not want alcohol dispersing into the air because I'm doing all this into the direction of my Denisoniana and I do not want alcohol vapor or anything landing on the roots over there so that's why I've done it off camera facing away see how this root looks just awful but it's fine it's super firm there we go I think that's that's cleaned up enough all right and now to clean up the pot and I will be back and we will be done with Luminosa. Woohoo! Okay, I'm gonna position her exactly how she was in the pot with the roots the way they were. They're too tough to bend and try and get into the pot. So I'm gonna put my focus on this root right here and hope that it doesn't come climbing out of the pot. Right now I'm gonna fill up with only large leka. and I'm going to be super careful about it because of that root tip. I'm going to come in from the other side where I have got a lot of space and I don't have to keep bashing on that root tip and hopefully my leka will float into position underneath. That is the plan. Just going to tilt her down a little bit for the root here or out of more interest than anything. Any new growth I will train with the support in mind, but I want this root 
to be pointing down more obvious than it currently is. As I'm filling up from the back to the front, because she's a climber, I'm leaving the back exposed. I'm not intending to fill there with Lekka at all. It's like playing Tetris here, but with Lekka and all for one root tip. <laughs> yep, but they are important. Every root tip is important. And the fact that I want it in the pot and not have this happening makes this little extra effort worth my while. And then I just hope it works. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here, and pretty much I'm done, is pick out Lekka and find how a root has curved and try to give it that similar kind of touch and closeness and proximity to moisture as it had before I unpotted it. I don't want the root to fail because I've been messing about. So it's a bit of a fiddle, but it is worthwhile long-term to at least ensure that the roots don't fail because of the intervention here. And the back remains free of lecker, the rhizome base, no lecker. And I will now fill up around the top with small lecker. And see if I can make that root understand where it's supposed to go in the pot. Just a little bit of convincing and nudging. And I think that's about it for Luminosa, who I thought was gonna be less of an issue but here we are, woohoo! Ta-da, job done. And I think they're gonna be fine. I have my new roots as my backup, should anything else go wrong. I've had a look at my Luminosa to see how the roots are responding to the environment. Yeah, a little bit zolala, as in comme ci, comme ça. We're working on that, we've changed that setup. I have my Velotina with the roots heading down into the pot and there's a hollow. Let them grow long and in, and then I will fill around with small leka and just cover them up. Two more down, I think I have 10 to go. Not today though. <laughs> but for now and for today, I say thank you very, very much for watching, for spending time of your day watching this video. Any questions, please, as always, feel free to put them in the comments below. Let me know how your orchids are doing. Are they waking up or are they going to sleep depending on which hemisphere you're in? Have a wonderful day, everybody. Really appreciate having you here. Take care and please stay safe. Bye.